This is Ghoul Bridge, 160 plus year old work of art. <laughs> There's a real beauty to the infrastructure we have, created by great engineers like Brunel, Stevenson, Harrison, Locke, pioneers of the system. You could say this is a bridge that requires swinging for vessels and the passage of trains, but it's so much more than that. One of the finest examples of swing bridges ever built. The history of Gould Swing Bridge kind of goes back to about the 1840s where uh, there were various um, plans put in place to build a connection between the South Yorkshire coal fields and the Port of Hull. Because of the different railway companies, nothing really happened until about the 1860s when the North Eastern Railway put forward their plans for the Hull and Doncaster branch. The River Ouse was a highly navigable channel so there was a lot of big ships going up and down that river. So it wouldn't have been appropriate to put in a normal bridge. The swing bridge was designed by Thomas Elliot Harrison and it was opened in 1869. A diesel engine powers a three throw diesel vertical pump that then creates oil pressure, which provides the pressure for an accumulator, which is just a large mass. The pressure lifts the accumulator up, and then it's that accumulator level, the pressure, that can provide a slow release and steady flow of pressure for the operation of the bridge. side of the structure there's a board that has various levels of height, four, five metre etc. Everyone has to be in contact with the harbour master at first and then obviously the, the bridge operators to determine whether they have enough air draft or clearance to get underneath the bridge and if they don't obviously then the bridge needs to be swung. There are only two pilots as they call them that are allowed to negotiate this channel. A vessel will pull up at a place called Black Toft, the pilot will then take charge of the boat and negotiate through the bridge, and then it gets to Howden Dyke where it's returned back to the uh, original captain. You have to be specially trained to negotiate through this channel. It's finding that balancing act between keeping the railway running, keeping the heritage side of things um, correct, and I think that's what the impending upgrades will address. The signal cabin on top of the bridge is pretty much original, so that makes it one of the oldest signal cabins on the network today. There's three indication systems upstairs that will all become one. What is a series of levers will be a start and stop electronic PLC controlled system. The exterior will look exactly the same, it will just change inside. Although it's a heritage structure and it's over 150 years old, it's still doing its job today. And that's down to the care and maintenance we, we give to the bridge. It kind of really demonstrates to others how we care and what we value about our network. I'm proud to be working on something so old and so unique. The stand is a testament not only to the engineers who built them originally, but perhaps as inspiration for future engineers. If you feel that engineering is the way you're going to go, there would be no better place than to experience this in all its glory. These structures are a part of the community they're in as well. You know, they become part of that collective memory and they belong to the area. So we do have a duty of care to look after these things and, and celebrate them for what they are, which is an amazing engineering achievement that still does its job today. <laughs>